baby is feeling in the righteous ways as the sun comes up over those vast monuments and the shadowing and the shading and the contrast just blows you away man into a heartfelt reality of red rock and ruggedy ruggedy conditions and just a sandy way of being beautiful don't you know and bringing up scrub oak and brush from the most desolate of places and building a few of these little oases out there in the middle of nowhere where people can come and refresh their heart forever after a long journey through the visionary reality. For you don't walk that earth without you begin to feel it. And the spirits and the ancients, they come and they speak with your heart and commune with your soul. And babies, you walk in a magic and enchanted place far beyond the dimensions of the reality you've been seeing around you. That's just the beginning of the beautiful, spectacular nature of life. And as you walk through this powerful valley, your heart soars above and watches over you like the divine angel that you are, that you remain protected in a very harsh land. Yeah, you could step on old rattlesnake and piss him off, you know. Might hurt you, man. <laughs> Don't, you know. You could die of starvation, yet you are nurtured by the life that surrounds you. And you needn't eat of it anymore to stay alive, man. The visionary reality, the realm of love, the truth of life is revealing itself to you. You understand, ooh, the energetic flow of back and forth, don't you know. So if you want to enjoy some little thing, like say a cabbage or something, you extend your hand and you feel it and it feels you and they bless each other and you're on your way, man. See, there ain't no need for harvesting anything anymore. We can just bless it and be it. And man, feel the totality of it. Then you don't have to eat of it anymore, you see. And there's a solution to the ancient hungers of life. You're walking fully present through a desolate but very divine presence of love, aren't you? I know John Wayne in the long ago felt that feeling and uh, John Ford right along with him as they were out there making movies in that magic place. It was almost an obscenity to allow such violence to occur in such a righteous place. But it was a harsh extension of a harsh reality. The aspect of desert living, ooh, kind of unforgiving. you got to be ready for just about anything. And then lightning strike you dead after all of that, man. Is a hazardous place of being in the terms of the humanity, the, the 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 settled down part that's fixed in the reality. But when you live in this truth, which of course, if you reside in that valley, you ain't gonna be there for long. Because first off, they don't want you residing there. And second off, well, shoot. It's love, man, and you're just going to be transported into the existential visionary reality no matter what you choose to be or how you choose to be it. You walk into magic, magic walks into you and it becomes your experience, your truth, your reality. So we're sharing the energy of that monumental valley with you here right now by just remembering it clear in our walk through it. It lasts forever. I think forever my heart will soar above that place. That's how much I love that mother love down there. Well, in all the Red Rock country that surrounds it, too, I hate to isolate it to one place. It's magic everywhere you go out here in the so-called Western reality, man. Because it's got a lot of our ancient history in it, too, covered over by the sands of time. Yeah, baby. But there is a spirit so divine, and that's what you experience there. When you journey there alone, in the company of angels, of course, and they'll have nothing to fear, your heart watches over you, dear. But alone and natural, alive in the living love of the presence of that truth. Red rock country is more than just red rocks. Unquenchable beauty, expansive, raw, real love, in the most ruggedy of ways, see? That's the way John Wayne and his simple-minded violence of his youth and John Ford riding along with him trying to produce, you know, some really ruggedy westerns. Well, you couldn't have picked a more ruggedy land to do it in. But monumentally spectacular. You know, you go back and look at some of those old John Ford movies from back in the early 1950s. You'll see what I mean, you know. But a camera can't do this energy justice. It can only display an aspect of the reality of it. It's something you have to go there and experience alone. Now, the energy of it can charge you from there, from a stupid old John Wayne movie way in the way back when. The thing I like about John Wayne, 
he gentled out as he came to the end of his term, you know, here. And that last one, I forget, the shootest, that last one was just pure melancholy, man. But it was like him forgiving himself for all the craziness of his zealotry through his youthful experience he, as he was a movie star, man. He couldn't be blamed, in other words. He knew that. But he was basically saying, I apologize, babies, and I pay my penance by dying. You know, but it was all melodrama, just like life is, you know. He didn't have to do that, but I was glad to see him soften up. I really was, man. Because he'd been a ruggedy old character on screen and off screen, but off screen, I think he was a whole lot more bodacious than on screen, you know what I mean? On screen, he had the rigid thing. It's kind of like Doris Day. She had the happy little virgin housewife that didn't know anything, never saw dust on her shelf ever, you know, that kind of presence, man, when in reality she was, well, you know, a Hollywood party girl, man. <laughs> oh, the irony of this reality, see, but it's poetic and it replicates to us the, our own existence and it suggests that's how we are, you know, that there's something far different behind the scenes going on when you're not on stage than what's really happening when you're on stage in life, so to speak. So you get born as a baby and you start to learn to act your way through it, man. You start to adjust again. It's a harsh process for some. Some flow into it like they've been doing it up forever, and they have. <laughs> Others, well, I mean, I don't think there's anybody who had not been seasoned by at least a thousand lifetimes. or Maybe a hundred if you're a real midget, but I don't think so, man. And I don't mean to demean the midgets. Now, forgive me, little people. I'm a little person myself, you know. I look like an elf in person, a little skinny one, man, sitting up on top of a tall steed saying, how the hell did I get up here? <laughs> what am I doing riding to the tall pony, man? I need something a little shorter, please. <laughs> That's a long way to fall, man. <laughs> Ooh, thank goodness I didn't take that horse with me, but I took the spirit of that horse with me as, as we traveled through the Monument Valley and experienced the love of it. Isn't that an awesome representation of such a righteous and natural place? You want to hold visions, man. you got to be there or be square, man. So, right now you are, because I don't want any of you being square out there, man. Shit, we got to be hip, because we're hippies for one thing. And for another, with a divine, gracious goddess of love in motion, for heck's sakes, all of this. <laughs> little inflection there but no reflection upon the characteristics of anyone out there babies we're just having a good time with life and seeing the love as it is see that most men fear that softer aspect of themselves they identify as feminine you know they most men have been really taught to suppress that stuff you know Fearing that it would just make them a weakling and, you know, you'd just be ruled over by everybody around you and stuff. That was kind of a valid fear in some ways. But nothing to need to fear about because, you know, if, you, if your heart's empowered, if you can really feel the power in the mother love flowing through you. You're still every bit of man. You're still every bit of presence of maleness, you know, but you're not polarized anymore. You see, and the roles re-identify themselves. You can see this magic unfolding as you travel through the Monument Valley on your bare little feet, man. You just trust the universe not to let you step on a scorpion or anything, cacti or anything that might hurt you, man. You just let the divine graciousness of love lead your feet like you're walking in the darkness and you have to, you know, the light has to show you the way. I don't know how many of you experienced that too, but that's that's an amazing experience as well, and you can do that at just about anywhere. But the magic places, ooh, then you start in the real pitch black darkness beneath the vast sky of the desert, I might add. Oh my God, it's alive. It's like the sunrise. It's like, you know, this is how life should always be. This is where the divine mystery reveals itself fully and presently. And you feel a state of union beyond the 3D with all that surrounds you, you realize the terrarium-like nature of it right along with that and how this that we experience and see here, very limited it can be. Because boy, when we start to see it this way, it gets expansive and you go beyond that personal view that holds you so fixed in this reality and makes you so subject to it, all of its nuances and treachery and so forth. It sets you free, in other words. 
Now you're a flowing, living presence in life that just goes with the flow of creation as if you're always walking that magic valley all the time, barefooted too. Naked if you can get away with it. It's hard to do out in country like that because there are a lot of people now. So maybe just be a little careful about all that. You can feel your nakedness neath the sheets or whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever you choose to wear out there. I suggest you be as, as, as obscure as you can be and quiet too. And then you'll experience... What you do right here, right now, as we walk through that magic valley, especially at sunrise. There's a magic time all across the earth, the sunrise is. That's why we're here in the morning with this Coyote Medicine Show on Hazy Radio Ooh, Network, babies. Don't you know? It's like sunrise in our heart each and every day, musically, exponentially, energetically, multidimensionally. And then there's the old man sitting here in the chair saying, Wow, I like this trucking, man. This is, oh, Oh, I'm on the radio now. Oh, I forgot, man. Shit, I thought I was still doing long haul. <laughs> Got to deliver that broccoli to New York City right away. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> and don't let any of the Smokies get in your way. My God, it's awful out there now, guys. Whew. Man, I'm glad I'm not driving them old truckaroos anymore. It's too much, too much monkey business out there. But babies, we're getting it clear here, you see. As we take this walk through the Divine Valley of Love, the monuments we've built to our own hearts. See, that's what they represent, the heart, energy, emotion. That's why that rock is red. That's the heart, the center of the universe, kind of. In a metaphorical sense, it really is. You know, and that's why it's colored red. You see, it's a heartland. It's a place of beginnings and of new beginnings as you renew yourself in the freedom of that land. Might be kind of expensive to get there if you have to go the old way. But I just suggest you transport yourself right there right now and enjoy it, man. A lot less expensive that way. You don't even have to think about it in those terms anymore, do you? That's the reality we live in already. Whatever you want to be in your heart, that's what you see. That's what becomes just for you and me. It's a return to that divine paradise, that Eden-like state where you can enjoy the fruits of life without labor. And you can fulfill yourself in the full presence of creation now because you've moved through the wisdom-gaining experience of, of polarity, good and evil, more or less, light and dark, etc. However you perceive it, that's what it be. But it's a neutralizing of that and no longer the need for any kind of anti-magnetics anymore. It's the centering in the magnetism of the heart which draws to it the energy of creation and then explodes into that creation exponentially, feeling it, being it. As you walk through the divine valley of love, the place of the heart, the mother's heart. That's why this country is so magic all the way around it too, man. Hundreds of miles of this vast territory. It surrounds Monument Valley. is kind of like the centering point of it. It's in a very central place regarding the Red Rock country. But every bit of it out there is magic. I don't care if you live down there in and feel blessed, baby. Because you're more highly charged with energy than others have. And others are, I tell you, man. And there's no uh, need for regret. You live magically and you're blessed for it. That's just the way it is. You see, you can let go of all the fixed vision you've had in your reality now if you're down in that territory. Time of beginnings, man, all across this earth, you know. And you can't avoid the experience of the visionary reality in powerful country like that, wherever it may be. You're, you know, you're isolated out there, babies. You're all alone in a magical reality that seems meaner than shit. Hot, dry, no water, rattlesnakes, scorpions, all kinds of things that bite you, scratch you, kill you. Cactus, dryness, desolation, but the most poetic beauty that could ever be expressed in those red rocks. Ooh, pure magic. Even the sand below your feet. Make you dance a little bit in the sun, man. Maybe you better take some moccasins, you know, kind of temper that heat a bit. Wow. 
because it can kill you out there, blister your feet up real quick. You run from shady cacti to shady cacti and hope you don't, you know, run out of shady cacti because not all of them are tall little barely cactuses with big arms, you know. <laughs> Some of them can be pretty scrawny. Oh, but what a righteous life we're living when we can be in such a magic place as this. Country that reminds us of our unraveling mystery of the real history of earth and of the divine heart of love that's driven us through these difficult ages, these ages of pain and oh, suffering. <laughs> we can laugh at it now because no one need to suffer anymore. See, that's been our illusion in this divine dream of love that there could be such conflict and such polarity. Such negativity, so-called, let alone positively, inside of our personal person, let alone the reality around us, you know. You had to sustain yourself through kind of a judgmental reality, just categorized everything, and you included, you know. You had to fit in somewhere. There was a little niche for you there somewhere. You see, it was just pretty uh, artificial reality in some ways, and all of us felt it and felt it and feel it even now as we release it to the magic of the real powerful land that surrounds us. Wherever we may be on this earth, it's just like this Monument Valley because it's a replication of the energy that's there. The rest of the earth is created around Turtle Island. That's why she's such a central place and this is where her heart exists. Right there in that red rock country, man. Four Corners kind of represents something. That's why energetically it's such a special place. I'm talking about a place where the corners of four states come together out there in that red rock country. It's pretty close to Monument Valley, but it's out there, uh, you know, real nearby. But it's a magic place too, man. It's a powerful little place. You should go pay the two or three or five bucks or whatever it is uh, to the Navajo so you can go see that and experience that sometime, you know. I suggest in the cooler months because there'll be less people there, you know. Winter's a really good time to go there, but just make sure you're dressed because that wind can be cold out there, you know. <laughs> Get yourself some polar clothes. Be ready. But, you know, the way it works out there, it could be 65, 80 degrees out there in January 1, you know. You could be standing there on them four corners just in the divine sun, man. Realize that's really kind of representative in a, a funny sort of way, an ironic sort of way. Those four corners represent the coming together of all nations, tribes of people, and all of the earth united in a central place, a, a heart, a place of beginnings, a place of blossoming. And that's kind of what you feel there is a union of energies. You step on the four directions there, basically. you got a f foot over... Two, line, well, two lines, so you're, you're in all four places at once. And this is like, okay, then the fifth and the sixth opened up, and for a minute you're standing in the divine portal of love, and are the center heart of life, and you're starting to see and feel how creation expands beyond you into uh, being, so that you can experience it and be that experience. I mean, it can be a magic moment in such a silly place as all of that that represents magic lines, invisible lines coming together that create division, not union, see? Yet in their coming together like that, there is the union and the end of division. I think we did it back in 2001, last time I visited there. I think we joined all the reality then, man. <laughs> That's the way I experience it even still, man. What's this, 15 years later, man, now time just sails away, doesn't it? Jeez, oh, well, it's because our obligation to it's diminishing all the time. You see, time's an exercise in polarity, too, and space and distance with it, because only with time and space and distance can there be a polarity. Otherwise, it just comes together naturally and blossoms outward from there, man. That's, that's just life living as it's always been and always will be. And it is ever-expansive. There's room for everybody, man. The fatalists might as well just bend over and kiss their la-la goodbye because, babies, you know, you ain't going to fry humanity this time. You're not going to put us away in any other way, you know. We're coming back. Hell no, we came back. We've been coming back for centuries now, but especially the last hundred years or so. And the last 20 pretty powerful and impacting, wouldn't you say? 
That's why the negativity's tried to hold itself over there in that side of polarity so strongly, man. You watch America fall apart at the seams, man. Our police, which used to be friendly little Andy Griffiths and silly little Barneys, all of a sudden are like Gestapo generals, man, each one of them. And they have the ability to take your life if they feel like it, you know. It's craziness, man. Let's see, that's the illusion trying to perpetuate itself. Keep you in that polarized reality. Don't let you see what's real here, you know. Keep you focused on the difficulty, the the oh, ugliness, you know, the sheer terror that others can create, you know. It's kind of like a boogeyman environment, even though it can reach out and touch you pretty severely. But not if you don't allow it to. If you live in this space where creation lives through you, no one can come into your vicinity and not be affected by it. And this changes the behavior of police or soldiers or generals or let alone your lovers and stuff quite naturally you know you just live in a different field of life and the energy that surrounds you is different and life just doesn't you know uh, tolerate anything that's incongruous anymore it doesn't see it that way nothing's in conflict everything's in agreement because we all exude forward from a singular presence inside each one of us and quite happily so like the living rainbow in motion, man. That's why we're called rainbow people quite often. Especially if you're of the more hippie inclination, so to speak. Isn't it nice to be a hippie, happy, intelligent person pursuing infinite enlightenment through places such as Monument Valley down there in southern Utah, northern Arizona? I tell you, man. Magic exists in all these lands, all across this earth, and every place is spectacularly beautiful in its own right, even if it's the ultimate representation of ugliness, like some of our industrial cities have been. You know? But there's such a beauty there. And you know what the beauty is in those kind of places besides the, the territory and the buildings and so forth? It's the resilience of the human heart. It's the people that can still be natural and live in such a, a, a great uh, testing place. Harsh conditions all around you, man. Yet you manage to live a simple life and get along with everyone and have a good time doing it. That's the gift of love in motion. That's beautiful. It's as beautiful as walking through this magic valley I'm talking about. I mean, it's essentially the same journey. And every bit is hazardous, but yet not hazardous to the likes of you because your heart flies above you and watches over you all the time. It takes pretty damn good care of you, too, you know. You just have to keep the old attitude going, man. That's all. And some might try to pull you away from but nobody can because you live in a place that's totally and constantly reassured of its existence here and the reality of its own truthful expression of love. And it's all about attitude in this creation, and you begin to see that. And you can't live it polarized anymore, and you can't retain the pain. That's the gritty stuff from which life of love now, in full presence, blossoming flowers, yeah, comes forward now. It's the old rain of pain. See, it don't rain on you anymore. It don't rain on your parade either. It don't rain on nothing. It just is now a part of our past at last. And the gracious and good part that tested us, oh, incredibly, man. But through which we've proven the durability of a real heart that this magic red rock country land represents. Ooh, baby. So now i got a couple of travel suggestions out there for you. And babies, if you'd like to go and experience a little magic with Grandpa, if we got that kind of time, well, babies, I'd love it. Let's see if we can put something together, you know. Uh, take a little bus trip out there sometime. Just kind of put our intention in that direction and see what's happening, man. So I'd love to be, you know, your personal escort out to such places, your tour guide. We'd experience some real magic going through that country, let me tell you. Camp out there. I don't know, you know, it might be a little crowded now. We'll just have to see. But if it's possible, camp out there in the desert under the stars, you know, and have a good time doing it, babies. You won't believe the the fire that arises from the campfires out there, you know, wakes up your heart, baby, you know. 
Then there's some coyotes, etc., out there to shake you and bake you just a little bit, test you just a wee bit, see how you're doing, man, you know. Just make sure you got your heart headed in the right direction, you know. Animal kingdom is like that. They're here with us, and they're a part of the, the scheme to get us right, man. We just haven't allowed ourselves to see that for a while now, have we? But we're getting it now. Everything's got its own energy and its own divine direction. And the energy that's held for the human heart while we were absent from that energy, it seemed, for a while. And we blessed the beasts and the children and all of them. We just brought them all back together. There begins peace within each of us and all the life that surrounds us. Living in that love, that true love of life, embracing this life that we live and loving our presence in it and allowing our perspective to move beyond the uh, banana-headed environment we've lived in and to be the full presence in this life living, man. Appreciate our place in it and grow from there, man. Whatever's been, been. Now it's dawn. Now it's awakening. Now we can see what truthfully be. And we ain't going to live like we did before. We ain't nothing like that anymore. Isn't that amazing? Changes that fast. At last. But here we go because it's a coyote medicine show. And that's the nature of the coyote flow, don't you know? Through the heart of the likes of Grandpa Coyote. That old wily booger, that ornery old cuss. You betcha, baby, and then some. The very heart of love and motion. I lived it to demonstrate it to you, baby. I'm going to stay alive in this beautiful heart and just let it expand and grow forevermore. Because you just put me there, babies. Thank you very much, man. I love you so. See, we're all the same heart in motion, don't you know? Oh, and it's quite the journey each and every day, Monday through Friday, on this Coyote Medicine Show. You want to stay tuned in. There's always so much more to go, baby. There's no room for it, don't you know? Time just fly by. We just love it so much. Being alive in this reality and be able to rock and roll our rhythmic heart and soul. Isn't it a blessing, don't you know? Oh, divinely so. Saluting you now with my Mary Jane Gateway to Paradise mug. Ooh, this is one of my antiquitous ones, man. Love, love, love all the way around, babies. Ooh, you, you beautiful mothers and brothers of love. Oh, I love you so. I mean, we are one love, don't you? All of us. Let go of the refinements, the definitions, man. Just be what you are. And we're, notice we're all together in it. See? That's the way it be, man. Ah, oh, and we can accomplish so much more just by allowing it to be so, just by relaxing a bit, letting ourselves get ever higher, okay? That's the way, baby. Grandpa promised if you get high, you're going to fly. <laughs> In more ways than one. This is metaphorical fun. A magnificent Monday, that's the one. Sunday is now Monday, and it's coming up today right inside your soft, sweet little hide and all the rest of us too, including little Oki Wan Kenobi, my divine assistant canine friend, brother, who, uh, who helps us find the way by just keeping his heart simple and loving, man, and busting life down to basics so you can experience it multidimensionally. That's the canine love. Oh, there's so much more medicine to go here on the Coyote Medicine Show. You better stay tuned in and keep a rockin' and opening up, too. I love you. So, 